Greetings all, this is Dame Fuxa and welcome back to my Let's Learn. So last time, um, I'll note that there's basically an update. And what happens when there's like an update, it basically um, renders all your older versions, basically uh, um, you, they're unavailable to you unless you like basically go back to the older versions and load them. When you load them up, they will load up into your um, current version that you're basically playing and uh, you can continue playing with them. Sometimes if um, you uh, are playing a version where they can't be um, uploaded into a new version, they don't work. And in such a case, you can't use them, but uh, you can go re-download the older client with the previous update you're using to keep playing your character if you want to. This is sometimes important if for some reason the uh, update you're playing breaks your game as well. And uh, that's happened to me before, such as in the higher Norfolk run. Right now we're in the Ruined Halfling Complex. This is right after Lake Nur. And the Ruined Halfling Complex is an undead themed dungeon. I'll note that we're keeping on the uh, Wizard's Steel Ring of Tenacity here. And for the most part, this is a, how can I say it put it? This is a good uh, example of a dungeon where you basically have to fight a special type of skeleton. And he's going to be really tough when we find him. All right, down here we've got a Nargerian Sultan. And another Generous Skeleton will then just come to us. I actually found a blade there, that's a, a great sword. I'll note that by the way, there's some uh, very special type of swords and such. The um, Colarium or whatever it is in this case, this intricate blade is practically long and almost as wide as your body. Yet contrary to its size and apparent girth it is not only light, but threatens to escape your grasp and fly away. You will need to be really strong to keep it grounded. Or really big. So this is a very special type of weapon. Uh, it, see, it says in blue at the uh, sort of like uh, below all the um, description of what it does. Attack speed improves with your strength and size category. So the more strength your character has and the bigger your character is, um, the, better, the better your attack speed will be with this weapon. It also reduces your fatigue and other stuff along with it, increasing movement speed and maximum movement. It's a really nice little blade, but um, of course it's not for us. But it is a you know a, a very interesting weapon to sort of point out that there's some weapons that you know um, are influenced by like your uh, size, for example. It's probably gonna be one of the few instances where I can you know say size is uh, gonna matter somewhat. All right, we got a rare down here. He's just um, a degenerate skeleton with uh, a sun paladin type classes because I can tell from weapon of wrath and. Weapon of Light is a uh, Sun Paladin. This guy's kind of like the, um, what do I call it, the uh, Illuminous Horrors that we were fighting a little bit before. He can have access to Searing Light, and he doesn't actually have it, he has like access to other stuff, but he could be using that if he wanted to. Okay, we're just going to hit with that. Um, we got hit with Martyrdom. Alright, so I'll note by the way there's some special talents like this. This is called Martyrdom, and what it does is all damage done by a target will also hurt it for 22%. So what this martyrdom is, whenever I hit this guy in um, melee or anything else, I'll actually be taking 20% of my uh, damage that I inflicted uh, on him back to myself. So if I do 100 damage to him, I hit myself for 22 damage. It's actually very powerful in the hand of mobs for, for most of the, you know, play. Um, Alright, it looks like I'm stationed right here. So what I'm going to do, we're actually going to drop... Actually, I don't want to drop that because I've got the Volcano on me, or the Mario on me. I'm almost blind. Um, so I'm actually being slowed by Gloom and other stuff that's happening to me. I'm actually kind of in a bad spot because I've been blind yet again. We're going to use Wrath of the Woods. I'm just going to start marching away from this guy. Um, we're slowed so he'll be able to catch up to me and possibly hit me a little bit, but... Luckily, it doesn't seem like he's being able to do so much as that. It looks like this will go off next turn, and we know that this doesn't inflict um, anything, so to speak, on me. This will basically hit him at the end of the turn, so basically I didn't get hit by that buff. So, there's this guy, basically, he's in this uh, fire now. Just gonna drop this here. We're just gonna... Marsh just got a flurry. And he dropped a belt. Doesn't look like anything special. Yeah, I just increased my light radius and stuff like that. That's okay, but not really necessary. Though I suppose it's useful in this sort of area. I 
You know what, we're actually going to use this because this is a dark dungeon. And this will give me a little bit more brightness to sort of see around. I can also put back on these boots if I want to. So maybe we'll do that. That'll give me back access to my leap. You know, to get away from stuff I need to. Not really escape. I'll note for, um, that also that there's some ghouls, and they're basically like, they're like zombies in this game. Um, they're basically uh, decaying corpses reanimated to attack you. In you know, every sense of the word. They're a little bit slower than uh, you, by the way, as well. They move at um, a slower speed. Alright, so here's an example of uh, one of the powerful uh, skeletons I was uh, thinking about, but... Um, so this is the Skeleton Max Master Archer. He's an elite ranked mob. Uh, he actually has very special abilities. As you can see from up here, he actually did something called pin to the ground. And what this did was, it actually pinned me to the ground and made me unable to move. He's also firing something called Crippling Shot afterwards, and that'll be able to cripple me, which is also bad. But um, we're not going to let that hit us. We're just going to use Infusion Wall to get rid of the pin stats, and we're just going to charge this guy with Rush. Now, these guys are also very special. You didn't really see it, but you'll probably see it on the next um, guy I sort of fight. They have a very special build, uh, or they have a very special um, mindset to uh, battle that they make use of. Here's another ghoul. He's apparently an Arcane Blade, so yeah, he has spells. Um, we're going to get rid of that, I think. And we're going to use this. And we're just going to charge this guy with Rush. Because there's very little limited darkness down here where an enemy could be. He's dazed, we're going to dirty fight him. He's stunned, we're just going to flurry him. So he wasn't too tough. Here's a ghast. This is another type of, like, the ghoul type of enemies, but this guy's actually kind of um, different from the original ghouls. How ghouls work in this game? There's essentially just the re regular ghouls that just run around. They just, you know, they're slower, they're lumbering hulks of rotted flesh and stuff like that. This guy, though, he's a little bit different. He's, um, he's still a ghoul, but he has, like, this ability to basically, uh, where is it? He has the ability to summon allies, and what he does is he actually summons more ghouls. So, if you don't kill these guys, they'll actually summon another ghoul to uh, fight you with. So, we'll do that. And there's an example, he basically summoned ghoul. So, there's a ghoul to fight. And, uh, you can only summon one, I think, initially. So, we'll kill him and be done with it. And then here's a ghoul king. He's an elite ghoul. And as you see, he summoned a ghast. And as you can probably guess from gas, they can summon ghouls. So this guy's a summoner, and this guy's a summoner. So this guy's summoning summoners. He's not fun. We're going to have to basically be very cautious around him. We're going to do this. And we'll drop this here. I'm not sure if these guys have it. We'll actually just check them a little bit. Um, so these ghouls still will actually have these very powerful towns later on in the game, but this guy doesn't have it yet. Uh, they have like something called Goose Leap, which is a, basically a jump ability. It'd be kind of interesting to see it when we get to it. Okay, we're in our, in our Ghoul King, and he's summoning our Ghast. And the Ghast summoned a Ghoul. Drop that there. And yeah, as you see, he'll just send our gas if I let him do so. Alright. Good old skeleton warriors. You know, you know they're basically good at the same as uh, before. Bad. But um, this guy's also uh, rare, so... This guy's a reaver enemy. He's got the ability to do, like, um... What is it? Corrupted Strength here. So, Corrupted Strength is his ability that lets him dual hand, one hand weapon, so he's gonna have higher damage output as a result. Gonna have to watch him, but hopefully he's not gonna be too much of a threat. We're just gonna activate this, activate that. We will rush him, and he actually crippled me a little bit there, so we'll get rid of that. I'm going to basically hit him with flurry and finish him off quickly. I'll note, I'll note that's just part of the game, by the way. Flurry starts to pick up a whole lot more importance, so I might actually. Um, what, I'm, I was, what I was thinking about doing is maybe going after Blur Sight to level this up to get more defense, but it might make sense to level this up to five of five. 
just because this is a very powerful like one hand um, one shot ability on most enemies and I'm already as you can see using it quite a bit to one shot enemies when I want to. And we didn't actually see the enemy I want to uh, really showcase here, but whatever. We're just going to look through the rest of these rooms. Let this guy close. Nothing else in here. Do you love the sound of opening doors? You don't have to listen to it anymore. All right, we picked up a ruin here. You know, skills of willpower is sadly not going to really help me. Now I'll note that at this point, because I've basically gone through this game and gotten through to the uh, um, Shirto Fortress at the end of the Lake of Nur in the last episode, I'm actually no longer interested in keeping these items. Whenever I have the chance, I'm actually going to transmogrify stuff now because it actually adds to fortress energy. And I want to show off a little bit of the features that you get from that. Alright, so we're down here. We got ourselves a skeleton archer here, a couple of these guys over here, but we're just going to charge him, kill him off. They're all dead. Charge the mage, because he's a mage. Alright, so here's the Master Archer again. Um, hopefully what's going to happen here, you'll be able to see what he basically, you know, what his mindset's so, supposed to be more or less in this game. I'm just going to do this. And that skeleton tried to use Stunning Blow, but it failed luckily. Alright, so here's the guy. He's moving away. So this guy will actually try to flee from your character if he gets a chance sometimes. And what I mean by flee is that he'll actually move away from my character. So if I shall step this guy, he's shooting me normally there, but he's more or less, um, he's a fleeing type of enemy. If you uh, imagine like this sort of like Diablo 1 type of concept where you had like those uh, um, goat demon type enemies that you fought in like the catacombs, they, they would basically flee whenever you got too close to them. They also did in like Diablo 2 I think as well. And that's the, the sort of concept these guys sort of have. You missed me there, that's good. We're actually going to wait from there, but as you can see, he's playing a very um, dancey type of game. He doesn't want me to get close to him. If I get close to him, then he responds by, you know, not letting me uh, do anything. He runs away. And these guys popped up, and we got stunned! And poisoned. Now luckily he, uh, as you, if you use corners obviously, then this guy can't really do anything to you. So I'll kill him. I'm going to drop this here. There's a generous skeleton there. Well, oh, my phone, phone's being ringing. Sorry for that interruption. So, uh, well, I guess I'll talk a little about the interruption. That was just a phone call from my mom. She's asking a little bit about my uh, power and cable and all that situation. Um, I'll note that this episode is actually being recorded right after the uh, windstorm for, uh, noted for my Let's Talk, if you uh, look at those. What happened is that uh, there's a windstorm last night and it actually knocked out my power and my, uh, my internet. So as a result, I wasn't able to um, do anything uh, uploading-wise. Not that it really matters, I don't have to upload every day, but... It's something to sort of, like, you know, consider. Alright, we got two skeleton mages up here. We're actually going to move here. Move here. Alright, we finally found him. So here's the Armored Skeleton Warrior. This guy is the other type of elite skeleton you'll face in here besides the Master Archer. And um, he's probably the most dangerous enemy actually in here as well. He has the ability to do uh, a couple of abilities that are, you know, 
really disheartening to be hit by. He can block, he can disarm you, he can also reposte, and he usually has like a ruin or something on top of him as well, as well as a stun here. The Armored Skeleton Warrior, they're basically, how can I put it? Um, they're basically tanks, and they're actually quite powerful um, at some points in the game. And yeah, they'll use shields every so often as well, if they have that ruin or anything else. We're actually going to wait for that to go off. So we'll actually go here. So we actually want to stun this guy quickly and um, try and knock off his talents before he you know, uses them to kill me. Let's dual fighting him. Alright, that's going to be it for this level unless so there's anything to explore up here. Which, of course, there is. You gotta check to make sure you got everything right. Would there be anything up in this corner? Nope, doesn't look like there's anything up there. Okay, so that's it for instance number two. So we picked up some more stuff. I'm gonna transmogrify this stuff to the uh, fortress for, you know, fair to use. Um... Nothing in here really interests me at all, so we'll sell it all to the transmogrification chest. Flurry this guy instantly. There's a mage right there. And a skeleton arch right before him. Now, I could rush him, but there's like two hallways here to sort of deal with. So we're actually going to wait for him to get closer to us. And there's actually another mage behind him, so, you know, probably good call anyways. We're going to drop this here. Kill you. Drop that there. There's another mage there, so we're actually going to just hold off here for a little bit for this guy to sort of approach. Kill him. There's a ghast, but whatever, he's dead. Most of the stuff I'm sort of mulling, but you may want to, you know in this situation and use other talents if, as necessary. But against these Skeleton Warriors, it's almost always advisable to use some sort of disabling talent to prevent from stunning you. Uh, something hit me for acid damage there. Oh, We've been hit by this guy. So this guy is... Um, he's got Golem Resilience. He's got Acid Infusion. This guy is an Alchemist. He has the ability to basically... Uh, how can I put it? He has the ability to um, throw bombs, basically. Potion mixtures at you, so to speak. You're going to just rush him, and we're actually going to... I'm just going to do this, I guess. He's got one of these guys behind him as well, so that's going to be an issue as well, but hopefully we can just, you know, mosey on through him easily enough. Going to drop this here. Now, he's an al alchemist or um, basically a special type of rare where they always have this golem or anything really with... Uh, if you're an alchemist yourself, then you'll have a golem accompany you. And these golems are basically a, sort of an assist type of mob um, that basically, if they're working for you, then they kill enemies for you. If uh, they're, you know, part of the enemy, then they're, you know, they're just summons of the enemy, so to speak. But they're permanent summons. Unlike like the regular summons that you've seen, like they say the gas summon the ghoul there, this guy will always exist unless you kill him. So he doesn't like destabilize and run away or anything else. He's just a really powerful type of character to sort of deal with. Okay, so this guy's on us. We're just going to stun him and kill him apparently. So we'll kill his golem. Kill this guy. Skeleton Mage got a little bit lost trying to find me there. Oh, okay, so this will sometimes happen, but uh, we just ran into a Bone Giant. This guy's kind of rare to um, find in this dungeon, but he does sometimes exist. This is, um, what can I say about Bone Giants? Bone Giants are basically very, very big undead, you know, bone monstrosities type of things. They, um, 
they have like the ability to stun you and they have like bone armor which basically lets them create a huge shield early on and they also throw bones eventually these guys become like laughing stocks so to speak they're kind of weak later on but earlier on they can be very very uh um dangerous especially with that stupid bone shield he's put on as you can see it's got a huge duration on it so that'll take forever to basically you know wait out but whatever drop this here kill this guy Luckily, I don't really have to worry about him having a really huge duration on his damage shield because I'm such a high damage character anyways. I can try stunning him. He resisted the stun, so whatever. And I'll note that he basically hits very, very hard, so... We're actually going to have to run away from him a little bit here, I think. Just to get my health back a little bit. We're going to... Actually, I think wait for his damage shield to go off at this point. So, by the way, they like to throw rocks at you. No. I'm gonna drop this right here. Okay, there. He's finally got theft off. We're actually use Rafa Woods now. I'm gonna use regeneration because he hits really hard. Because you know this, they are very threatening early on. And we're just going to hit him with flurry, and that'll actually hurt him a little bit. And let's try this. I don't think these guys bleed. Or it doesn't really matter. He died anyways. Well, he's out of the way. If you see those guys those early on, just be very careful of them. You may want to just, you know, wait till their damage shield falls off. Um, as necessary, do other stuff. If they spawn as a rare, then you should just probably run away automatically because they'll be very, very frightening. There's a staircase down. A summoning little ghast here. Okay, this guy here. Uh, dirty fighting. Alright, so he used shield pummel there. He stunned me. Not really a big deal to us, but... Something that could be threatening. We're going to drop firewall on him, I think. I'll drop this as well. Yes, the Ghoul King. He likes to summon stuff. Ghouls also have quite a bit of HP, by the way, as well. So I basically try to flurry him down instantly, but it's very unlikely I'll basically get an instant kill flurry if I, you know, use that straight away. You almost always have to hit him with something else to take him down. Um, it's that's okay, but I think we'll actually sell this to uh, the Transmogrification Chest. All right, we're on Rune Halfling, uh, Halfling Complex number four. At this point, I'm actually going to uh, basically uh, do something. Oh, stun him. All right, so this guy actually used block. So you haven't really seen it yet, but block is a really nasty ability. Um, I'm basically going to do, do this. And he tried to overpower me, but he missed. But anyways, when he's blocking, he basically has this sort of... Uh, um, how can I put it? He has, here, I'll just hit him once. So I hit him, and you, you basically get this thing called Counter-Strike on you. Uh, I don't think I've really demonstrated it to this point, but this guy is really the, the best thing where you'll you know, really start to uh, you know, fear Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike basically makes you vulnerable to a de deadly Counter-Strike, which basically causes the next melee attack to inflict double damage. I also believe that uh, because he has Reposte, if uh, you want to read that talent, Reposte actually increases the a chance that he'll get a critical strike when he um, hits me after it. So, um, another thing to note about this guy, uh, about blocking in general, blocking with, uh, without Reposte is kind of hard, and it's not really advisable, but if you have at least one talent in Reposte here, it actually causes any attack me on this guy, in like basically by me and Mali, he'll automatically inflict a Counter-Strike on me, um, as he levels it up, he'll basically increase the duration of the Counter-Strike debuff on attackers by one, so as you can see, I've got a double turn Counter-Strike on me, and also lets him get extra Counter-Strikes on me as well once he gets to the level four. So, increase the number of Counter-Strikes you can form on a target while they're vulnerable by one, so he can actually hit me twice for double damage. And the last thing it does is increases the critical chance of the Counter-Strikes by 23%, so when he critical chances me, 
he can do a lot of damage. So you want to be very fearful of this like effect. Um, it is you know take a take away by wild infusion, but you probably don't want to have it on you at any time anyway. So it's advisable to try and avoid it as much as possible. All right, at this point, we actually want to get this up to five, and I may come back to increase fixed skin a little bit, but we're going to start focusing on the stuff up here finally. And thinking about it, do I want to get flurry now or do I want to get it later? The thing about defense is that it's really useful for you know making it so enemies like laughably never be able to hit you, but it's really hard to build. Um, it's also at this point as well that I'm going to get to part of the game where it really matter if you have defense because the, the enemies I'm really fearing, like the Skeletal Mage and um, the guy, who, uh, the boss I'm thinking, prepping for with the Lightning, these guys, they don't really interact with your defense stat at all to begin with. So it actually makes sense for me to possibly go increase Flurry now. And the pre reason for increasing Flurry is that will give me a very powerful uh, single target ability that I can use to kill the spellcasters very fast if uh, I really need them to die. So we'll increase that. We're we'll increase uh, dexterity up a little bit more to get to a soft cap, and then I'll increase magic up here a little bit as well. So we'll do that. There's another one of these guys over here. We'll let him get close. We're actually gonna let that damage shield just go off, and I'll note that he's actually used the reflection shield. Um, the reflection shield is kind of different from the uh, one he's been using so thus far. So let's look at. It. The Reflection Shield. Activate the Ruin to create a protective shield absorbing and reflecting at most 150 damage. Uh, it scales with magic stat, and it basically reflects 150% of the damage that uh, he, he takes back at me. So, if I hit him with like this, 150 damage would go right at me instead of him, and he wouldn't take any damage. So, it's a very dangerous Ruin to hit this guy with at the moment, so we want to basically just avoid hitting him. And then we'll wait for it to go off. We'll stun him. And he finally used disarm. So here's disarm. Uh, the target is maimed and unable to correctly wield a weapon. Physical save will reduce the effect of blah, blah, blah. Um, this basically, as you see, shut down my talents. And I don't have anything available except for Shadow Strike and Rush, which don't require uh, any specific weapon talents available. I can get rid of this, but the thing about uh, this guy is you want to really watch out for his, like, you know, status of abilities I can do on you. This is why this guy's really dangerous, but just kill him. And do that. Kill that mage. Kill that mage. Stun that guy. Oh, there's a guy I just sort of ignored there. So we're going to have to back off from this guy a little bit. Back off yet again. And yeah, he's going to try and run away if I don't get on top of him. So we'll kill him. I should probably give Skeletal uh, Archers a little bit more due notice than what I've been giving them. They're, the Skeleton Archers are actually, or not these guys, but the Master Skeleton Archers are arguably just as dangerous as the uh, Armored Skeletons in here. As much as, uh, you know, these guys are also dangerous as the Skeleton Mages. By the way, this door down here at the bottom of the level, we're not going to open it yet. That room actually down there leads to the boss. But there's actually something very special about this boss, so I'm actually go not going to actually fight him at all. Uh, I fight this. We're going to rush him. Notice well, by the way, that ghouls have a very low chance of being stunned. They actually have very innate um, stun resistance. Oh, he stunned me. I'll note that this guy resists my stun twice. So this guy here, he's actually got fairly good physical save, as you can see. So stunning him is actually really hard. Uh, this guy's actually a bulwark. He's actually probably the really uh, most threatening type of enemy you might potentially face that you might not actually expect to be threatening. Um, they actually have the ability to like use like something called shield wall and this will increase their defense by 28 and armor by 27. They also have um, some other stuff like shield pummel and shield, shield expertise which lets them um, basically do more damage with their shield type talents. So this guy's actually kind of dangerous. 
but he's not really dangerous in like you know the unique way of like the guy is spellcasters being dangerous they'll do like lots of damage this guy's dangerous because he's really hard to like you know sort of pummel to death because i can't stun him luckily i can just you know rip him apart but he could have been a lot more dangerous than that along with other monsters for example all right that's just the uh, insidious poison infusion we're not going to use this I was checking it because, you know, he dropped a dagger and I want to see if it was any good. And we come to this guy here. Alright, well, this is a ghoul, so we'll look at this. So here's, like, their, like, sort of thing here. So, um, ghouls are very resilient. They can't take any more than 70% of their damage at any given time. So, this guy, I can't hit him for more than, uh, whatever his health is. He's got... 639 health. If I was able to do, say, an 1,000 a thousand damage type of attack to kill this guy, it actually wouldn't kill him. Uh, what would happen is he'd take 70% of the damage instead. So he would take um, whatever 70% of like 639 damage there is. I think it'd be close to... What would it be? Let's say it would take 400 damage instead of the full 1,000. Just because... Um, 70% of his life is, is like, you know, uh, 400, so basically he only takes 400 damage and has 200 or so remaining. Now this guy, in particular, he's actually a corruptor, I think. He has, uh, basically these talents that, like, do hexes on me and rotting disease and stuff. He's actually going to be kind of dangerous to be, um, you know, uh, he's, like, sort of dazed me here, and he's, like, as you can see, already causing me problems. We're going to want to do this, this, and this right away. And he actually boom grabbed me and dropped me right in the lane of him. So that's kind of interesting. What we want to do on this guy, since he's now graciously put us in the lane of him, we're going to try and stun him with uh, dirty fighting. And luckily, I think we stunned him. But he stunned himself and actually... Did he miss? Yeah, he actually missed us, but... I'll note, by the way, that one of the hexes he's got here, the pacification hex, this is actually dazing us every single... You know, uh, every time we're not dazed, we have a 34% chance of gaining the dazed effect. So what's happening is I'm actually getting dazed constantly by this guy because of his stupid status here. Um, dazed will actually reduce my damage by half and also my other stuff as well, but we're actually going to use a dual strike there to sort of just stun him a little bit more so we knock off a bunch of his other talents. And that'll actually make him a little bit weaker. Hopefully, he actually knocks his days off of us. He actually this uh, days, by the way, this won't go off unless you use a physical infusion, but it'll also go off if you get hit by anything. So if he hits me at all, this goes off. But per preferably, I don't want to get uh, hit. But um, one days actually may actually want. In this case, I did. Anyhow, we're going to kill him and just be done with it. I could have like tried to kill it sooner there, but. It's sometimes nice to save your talents in case of an emergency happens. Alright, we got a rare skeleton archer. He doesn't have anything as sort of letting me know what he is, but... Well, this is going to be odd, but um, this guy, I think, is a berserker. He's a berserk skeleton! Or maybe he's an archer, I can't really tell. It doesn't really matter, we're going to rush him. And he actually uh, heaved us away there. He's launching Flare at us, which is not going to be fun, but we're going to use Shadow Strike to get right on top of him to kill him. So yeah, he wasn't really much of a threat to begin with, but... Alright, so this is the boss door. We're not going to fight it. Um, the boss in this instance, there's actually something very special about this instance in the boss fight. So we're actually going to leave him for later. And this is something that, like, I really should note about um, the uh, Lake of Nur. If at any time you want to, you can always come back to a dungeon to uh, visit the boss. And I did that pretty much in the Star Dungeons constantly. Um, but you can leave, like, a, right in the instance itself if you want, just to uh, come back later. So we're going to do that instead of, like, you know, pushing on to this guy. Because there's actually a good reason um, that I'm sort of doing it. When we actually come back to fight him, I'll actually show it off. But uh, for now, I'll keep you guessing. There's basically a reward if you do something. And uh, it actually leads to, uh, as a hint, the Yeek unlock. So if you want to use the Yeek race, you actually want to accomplish something here. Now, I was actually looking at these boots, but I think we'll stick with this one. And we'll just push on.
I'll note by the way you get an achievement if you get to a thousand gold. So I got to a thousand gold accumulated. There's an achievement for it. Now at this point, um, there's a couple of things I might do, but you should, uh, I'm, I'm getting to a point where I actually want to check my uh, Brotherhood of Alchemists to see what um, uh, ingredients I might need. I'll note that from before, I can't do really do anything for the guy in Dirt because he needs a Rick Stinger. Finding that might be, you know, I, I, I may in slight chance find it earlier, but it's going to be a late game item, so I probably won't be helping this guy at all. Um, Maris of Elvia, he's asking for... Uh, one modified bone, one wrestling eyeball, and I already got the Pouch of Bone Giant from that Bone Giant we fought. Um, so he actually has two things that are actually very easy to sort of get. The modified bone is actually something that you can get from the Elven Ruins, and you just have to find a mummy, mummy and kill it. The wrestling eyeball, that that might take a little bit you know, of like waiting to do, but you basically find wrestlings from uh, this randomly you know, from a dungeon. I'll also note that I need to get a Fearless Axe from, for Grimly and a Failing Fang for Ungrel. Now, as stated, I guess, I, or I hope I stated it, but these guys, the Grimly and Ungrold, they're Elixir of Foundation and Elixir of Focus. These are probably the most important Elixirs that you want to make front and center. And I have the ability to sort of get Pharaoh's, the Pharaoh's Ash right away. What we're going to do, we're going to actually go to the Market of Spellblaze. I don't advise doing this um, very much, but basically, the Market of Spellblaze, eh, boy. The Market of Spellblaze is a spellcaster area. You basically have to fight spellcasters like these guys that you already fought. You also have to fight elementals like these guys. And in this guy's case, we actually have a Slipfist slip, a right there. He's actually level 27. Um, as you can see, these guys are way out of my league, but uh, if this is actually a dungeon you could go to to try and find some early Pharaoh's Ash if you want. Sadly, because of the entrance here, it's actually, you know, it's not looking good. We're actually going to immediately exit the dungeon. I'll note that if you just peek in and peek out like that, you don't get attacked, so... That's basically a free way to look in there and see how difficult that might be. So, if I want to, eventually I'll go to uh, the Market of Spellblaze to try and get the Pharaoh's Ash, but since obviously there it's a, you know, bit of a uh, hard barrier of getting in early on, we'll not do so. Um, the Fairling Fang, that... That's also potentially a late game item, but not as late as the Rick Stinger. We might get this, uh... Earlier, but we'll see. So I just want to touch on that before doing anything else. Next time, I think what we're going to do, we're going to go to Daikara. I'll actually just jump in here for now. Okay, good. Um, I'll note that this is actually very fortunate for us because of the fact that we got Mark of the Spellblaze being very hard to enter. Um, when you see this, in, uh, this like, sort of message pop up, it actually means you've gotten the alternate Daikara. It actually means that we'll actually be able to find Pharaohs in here. So I'll be able to find the... Uh, ingredient for a Grimly here, the Pharaoh's Ash in this place, eventually. Luckily, hopefully. All I need to do is find a Fire Elemental, and they'll spawn in this area because of the um, alternate instance. Now, before I go, I'm just going to do a few things. Um, I don't really need Light Radius for this area. It's helpful, but not really needed. Because this is like a this is like an outdoor area. As long as it's not night, you can basically see in here. We're going to basically put this on instead. Oh! No, 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 we don't put that on. And I'll note, this is actually a fairly good instance to maybe have lightning resistance on. So we're actually going to put these boots on. And the reason I'm putting on these boots is because they do have lightning resistance on them. So I'll be able to get a little bit better from that. They also have temporal resistance on them as well. And that, this is actually the only real instance where I'll say temporal, um, temporal resistance is actually possibly going to be useful. Um, to us. There's also another instance, but uh, uh, you'll learn about that when we get to it. We're also going to put on our Ring of Clarity here, which will actually give us a little bit of a boost in Confusion Immunity. And we may want to get this here. Let me think. Confusion's a... Uh, uh, how can I say about Confusion? It basically uh, runs off the mental save, so this is actually not really use, um, worth having on in here because we have a high chance of getting uh, confused. We'll actually take that off. And I'm actually going to put on something else. I could put on this for a little bit uh, extra life and pinning a knot back, that's actually kind of useful. Or I can put on like this uh, pixie ring of sensing over here as well. Um, I think we're gonna put this on 
for this instance, the uh, this one more time, this ring. I'm probably going to transmogrify this ring after this instance because there's not going to be a whole lot of use to me, I don't think, afterwards, but um, we'll put those on for now. And we're not going to worry about this here, I don't think. Can't put it on because I apparently got rid of the strength item I need to put it on with. And uh, that'll be pretty much it. So um, that's going to be it for this specific episode. Next time we'll move on to, into Daikara. And I'll note that Daikara is much like the uh, old forest in a way. Other than the fact that it's open area, it's also uh, got... Um, well, I'll get to it when we get to it. See you in the next episode.